Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is the 10th anniversary episode of Diffuse Congruence, and I am your host, Pervez Ahmed, and it is my pleasure to be here. Unfortunately, you get me alone because of scheduling issues, but nonetheless, Omar is here in spirit, and so is Zeki, former co-host of the show uh, and co-founder. But I wanted to take this opportunity to just get on the microphone and just share some thoughts as I ruminate on these past 10 years. And, you know, you get to a point in your life where sort of nostalgia becomes the sort of go-to response for memories, for accomplishments, for plans, for quite a number of things. And I'm certainly not immune or exempt from that. And so, I just felt compelled to at least get on microphone and just share a few thoughts that I had on these 10 years. Um, First, and I know this is going to sound cliche, but I can't believe it's been 10 years. We began the show in October of 2013, and here we are, October of 2023. I think they tell us that this is the 10 anniversary. I didn't know that there was such a thing, but apparently the 10th anniversary is a tin anniversary. Maybe that's why I don't know a lot of people celebrate their 10th anniversary. But nonetheless, I wanted to just sort of get on mic and and just share share some thoughts that I had. I, I know this story has been told, but that's sort of where my mind goes when I begin to reflect on these past 10 years was first and foremost, the genesis for the show, the impetus that Zaki and I had to decide to sort of start the show was because there was no other sort of Muslim podcast, i.e. podcast about Muslims, Islam, from and by practicing, abiding, committed Muslims in the space 10 years ago, I think to the exception of one, which that show no longer is around. But I think that by that definition, and I'm willing to stand corrected, I believe that Diffuse Congruence is the oldest extant Muslim podcast in the space today. And that's certainly something that I know I'm very proud of and something that just goes to the longevity of what we started, you know, 10 years ago, which was just simply to tell people's stories, to simply preserve uh, oral histories, and, and to discuss important issues confronting the Muslim community from the vantage point of two people who uh, have been in the Muslim community in various capacities, and to use that to frame a conversation with the guests that we have. And I think this idea of preserving or capturing oral histories, people's stories was something that sort of was ingrained in my DNA. Um, and I say that because uh, my father, God bless him, Rahimullah, he used to love recording elders in our family. I remember from, for this was a practice that was something that he did throughout the decades is that whenever he was given an opportunity, he would, he would just sort of get on, get a microphone, get a tape recorder even, and just start recording with people. Before there were tape recorders, he would do it with uh, his uh, spool uh, recordings. And through the years, he did it in various uh, video formats as well, whether it was movies without sound or photographs or movies with sound, film uh, with sound. And so, that was something that he always did. And we have quite an archive, in fact, of family recordings, whether it's recording with elders, my grandparents, elders in the family, but also preserving family gatherings, people's weddings, speeches, entertainment at weddings, etc., all within the family. And certainly not for, you know, any sort of uh, public consumption, but rather something that he enjoyed doing and something that he would often like to listen to. And I think that was sort of inculcated because I grew up in that milieu and of, of listening to sort of old archives and, and interviews and conversations, sorry, not really interviews, but conversations with my grandparents, with uncles and aunts and grand uncles and grand aunts and so on. So, I think that was just sort of a passion that was in in the DNA. And so, when, when Zaki and I began this conversation around starting this podcast, for me at least, that was first and foremost, was I wanted to create a platform where we could capture the stories of religious leaders, thought leaders, uh, members of the community who have had an indelible impact on me personally, an indelible impact on our community on the Muslim project uh, in America, 
And so that's what we set out to do. And I think that if we examine and if we look at the major accomplishments, or at least the ones that I like to highlight with regards to 10 years of a history of doing diffuse congruence, has been the guests that we've had, the thought leaders, the religious leaders that we have featured. Just to name a few, and this is not an exhaustive list, but Dr. Omar Farooq Abdullah, Imam Zaid Shakir, Dr. Sherman Jackson, Dr. Munir Farid, Imam Siraj Wahaj, Dr. Ehsan Bagbi, Sheikh Faraz Rabbi. Bani, Sheikh Mohammed Amin Khulwadia, local Zaytuna faculty like Dr. Ali Atai, Dr. Abdullah Hamid Ali, and, and others. And it's a countless list. And there's many, many more that, I, um, uh, that I'm sure I've forgotten to mention. But we have captured long form interviews with these people. And I would submit that there's probably no other platform out there that has captured the story of these individuals in the way that we have. And so that's certainly something that I'm very proud of. And what I did was to draw on over 30 years of working within the Muslim community with different organizations in different roles. And that sort of, to me, has culminated into this podcast. This po- I consider this podcast the culmination of over 30 years of being involved in the Muslim community in some capacity. I know I've often joked and I've often remarked that I consider myself sort of the Muslim Forrest Gump. For listeners, you know what I mean by that. I've just been frankly, a simpleton who's been lucky to be in the right place at the right time, to have met some remarkable individuals, to have shared and and experienced some remarkable moments of history within the Muslim community in America. And, uh, you know, I consider myself eternally grateful to Allah, you know, grateful that Allah has given me the opportunity to do that. And simply this podcast has been an outgrowth of that has been the ability through those 30 years of making contacts, networking, uh, knowing individuals, I've been able to just pick up the phone, you know, figuratively and, uh, you know, literally and reach out to people that I know, or I have one degree or two degrees of separation from just given the expanse of work and networks and contacts that I have by by the follow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to be able to just do that and call in a favor or not just reach out directly. So, that to me is really what this podcast has been has been about. And my experiences, history within the community, I feel, uh, have allowed me a scope that informs the questions that we ask, that informs the questions that I ask, you know, how we get our guests to journey their life stories and share their own life experiences and histories. I think that our posterity Future generations will thank the show for existing because we have been able to archive uh, and preserve these stories, preserve these narratives, preserve these conversations and discussions on the issues of the day. And I, and I hope that that is the case. And, you know, of course, don't have a crystal ball, nor do I have the ability to look into the future, but inshallah, that will remain the legacy of the show. And when I talk about legacy, take this for what it's worth to my fellow content providers and creators, the uh, so-called online dawah scene, is to approach the content that we put out with that in mind, that this is a legacy. This is the legacy that you're putting forward, not into the community now or here, or here in the moment. But you're putting that out there for for posterity, for future generations, for people 20, 50 years from now who will listen to that archive, listen to that podcast, watch that video, watch that debate, uh, whatever it is, whatever content it is, watch that refutation video. And that's going to be your legacy. That's certainly something that informs how I approach the show. And I I don't say this out of boast or out of, you know, idea or premise that I'm because I'm pious or righteous or anything like that. But it really, the idea of legacy, what is it that we're putting out into the world, not just for today, but because of technology uh, and because of how these things are disseminated, we're putting this out for years, decades, generations from now. And so, how do we want to be remembered? How do we want our legacy to be defined by? What do we want to define our legacy? That certainly informs how I approach the show. And sort of this conversation, I think, around legacy leads me to to talk about the sort of pitfalls that I think we've avoided uh, because of approaching the content that we put out with that in mind. You know, the show has never been and will never turn into us just pontificating because who wants to listen to two dudes pontificate who 
and I'll speak for myself, I don't have any expertise, any niche expertise, whether it's in Islamic law, whether it's in sociology, whether it's in history, whether it's in whatever may be the topic, right? I'm simply here to ask poignant, open-ended questions that allow us to learn and benefit from our guest. That's what I do. That's the role that I play, right? In these 30 plus years of working within the Muslim community, whether as an organizer, a speaker, a teacher, uh, a podcast co-host, I have merely served as a fulcrum, as a conduit between the knowledge and information those invited to the show have shared or those invited to the programs that I've organized or to the uh, events that I've been a part of or to the organizations that I've been a part of. I'm simply a conduit and a fulcrum uh, by which our guests can benefit, the broader audience can benefit. And now you, the listeners, can benefit by us simply or me functioning as that fulcrum, as that conduit between you and the guests that we have. And, and that's why for me, when I define the best of the show, the best of the show is when we allow our guests to share their perspectives, their opinions. Few things have been more rewarding t- for me than to hear back from some of the scholars that we've had or thought leaders we've had or a religious leader that we've featured or, or a basketball player or an athlete or a role model that we've long admired is to have them come back to us and provide the feedback that that interview that they did with us, that uh, interview that allowed them to share their background, share, share their story, share their history, share their perspective was something that people who have have long admired that individual, never knew about them. And so the podcast allowed them to share that story or share those stories. And we captured that and we shared that. And and people have come back and our guests have been able to come back to us and thank us for that opportunity. And that's something that I define as the best of the show. That to me is what defines the legacy that is Diffuse Congruence. And, And speaking about the guests that we've had, whether we agree or not, and when and if we don't agree, I would think that we push back delicately and push back, push back respectfully or frame the opposing view or perspective from the one that is being offered from our guest and and allow them to respond to that. We're not interested in polemics. We're not interested in a debate format. And I think that 10 years of the show proves that. But again, avoiding sectarianism, avoiding polemics or simply embracing contrarianism for clickbait or to generate views, or to generate content. That's something that I'm very proud of, that we've never allowed the show to become that type of a show where we are refuting individuals, or refuting people, or canceling people, or uh, sharing uh, or discussing the ugly underbelly of the Muslim community in a way that is punitive, or in a way that is that seeks an agenda, or comes from a point, vantage point of an agenda. You know, when we're talking about this issue of sectarianism, you know, I think a special note should be made about sectarianism or what may be defined as minhaj. What is your minhaj diffuse congruence? You know, what is your approach? What is your ideology? And I want to simply say that we're not blank slates. We're not wishy-washy about where we stand on the issues we discuss. But what we do allow for is what, and what we have deliberately avoided is to interject our perspectives be it sectarian or otherwise, and use that, that perspective to frame the conversation. Rather, if the accusation is about being quote unquote wishy-washy or a blank slate, is that the platform itself, the, the show is, is a blank slate in the sense that we don't come from the position of a particular sectarian argument or we, that, that we allow that to frame the conversation. Rather, the guests are allowed to speak for themselves, whether or not we agree with everything that that person says, or we don't. And that's been the the way we have approached even the sort of thornier issues that we've discussed within the Muslim community. And so, again, that's, I think, something that we have avoided. We've also avoided and been very deliberate about not being the flavor of the week or not discussing the topic du jour on social media or what's hot or what's trending, what has people all riled up on social media. And that's going to be the issue we discuss to generate clicks, to generate content, uh, or to simply pontificate on the matter. That's never been our approach. I hope that the topics we, we have explored are broad and universal enough 
where they're not tied to a particular moment in time, but rather they speak to issues that, whether specifically or just more broadly, are issues that confront the Muslim community and, and continue to confront the Muslim community. And so, I think that that's been a deliberate attempt that we've made, and I hope that you as listeners appreciate that about the show. And then finally, I know this has been longer than I wanted, but with regards to the future of the podcast, I've certainly considered and thought about adding a video component. I think that video content generates more. It allows the show to be disseminated across audiences that may not just simply listen to a long form interview audio format only. They want a video component. And I think that the metrics and the numbers just sort of speak to them, speak for themselves. Content that has a video component in addition to an audio component, whether it's PBD podcast, whether it's Joe Rogan, whether it's other content in the Muslim space, um, you know, when there is a YouTube component or a video component that generates more engagement with the audience. And again, I'm not interested in engagement for engagement's sake. But I would be lying if I said that I wouldn't be happier if more people were able to access the content that we put out there. And I think that audio only, there's a certain ceiling that's difficult to break uh, with regards to engagement when you're just an audio only format, um, especially given the fact that audio only format was largely consumed or is largely consumed by people who have commutes, people who are on the road a lot. And I think that, you know, with hybrid or people working entirely remotely and not having daily commutes, that has limited the consumption of audio only content. Not to say that people don't continue to download audiobooks and uh, that's how they just engage with books, the material through an audio only format. But I think that if we just compare or if I've in my own analysis of other other podcasts and other content creators, whether it's in the Muslim space or outside in the broader society, the numbers, again, just simply speak for themselves in terms of engagement. And so, it's something that I've certainly wrestled with, but the problem that I face is if I'm going to put out, if we are going to put out video content as a podcast, then it has to be at a certain caliber. We have to have equipment that is able to produce, that is able to create the kind of content quality that I am interested in. I'm not interested in doing a, a less than perfect or a less than excellent job with regards to video content. And so that's very important to me. And so that's why I still wrestle with this idea of a video component to the show, because if we're going to do it, then I want to do it in the best way possible with the best use of technology that's available and out there. And so again, something there we're gonna that I'm gonna continue mulling over that but I'd love to hear from you if if you are a listener out there and you have a easier solution or you have some advice with regards to how we can put out video content that is engaging. And I would love to hear from you. Hit us up at diffusecongruence at gmail.com and I'd love to have a conversation. So if you're interested in offering any kind of advice about video content we're all ears. Please do reach out. Another part of, I think, with regards to future plans, something we've certainly talked about and teased on the show is to beef up our Patreon page. Um, again, special thank you and, and, and a deep sense of gratitude to existing patrons of the show, uh, people who have gone to patreon.com slash diffuse congruence and have become patrons of the show. I'm really working towards uh, beefing up the content that we make available only to our patrons. You know, I've been blessed for over 30 years of working within the Muslim community, been part of various organizations, been part of various um, organizations that have done events. And I have a a huge archive uh, that I've just recently tapped into because I'm investing in certain technologies that will allow me to take content that I only have, for example, on VHS or that I only have on audio cassette and transfer that into a digital format and then put that content out there. Uh, some of this stuff is just unbelievable in terms of historical events, historical lectures, 
10, 15, 20 year old uh, content by uh, some of our mashaikh and scholars and religious leaders and thought leaders. So certainly something that I'm very, very proud of, of owning, but I want to put that out there again, simply, you know, with regards to legacy, right? I mean, what am I going to do with that content just sort of sitting here in a box on cassette or VHS? I'd like to put that out there for consumption and for appreciation and dissemination across the broader Muslim community. And so that's certainly something that I am working on right now as we speak so that I can put, put that out via Patreon and you can download it and you can listen to it and you can access it if you become a patron of the show. So yes, there's certainly a selfish interest or a catch, if you will, is that if you become a patron of the show, promise that you'll have access to this uh, never before seen in some cases, material and content that is 10, 20 plus years old. And then when we talk about future plans for the podcast, we're going to continue doing what we're doing, right? We're going to continue doing long form interviews with our thought leaders, our religious leaders, some returning guests, some guests that we've long tried and tried to have and schedule on the show, but we continue to push and we continue to advocate for it and make it and try to make it happen. I've got names that I don't want to name, but I think those who've been listening to the show long enough probably can guess some of those individuals who I have tried for years to have on the podcast, but we continue to try and we don't give up. And so uh, we're going to just continue doing what we do. And whether that format remains, as I mentioned earlier, whether it's going to remain audio only, or it's going to also, also shift into video, that remains to be seen, TBD. Here's to our 15th anniversary, which they say is the crystal anniversary and our 20th anniversary, China, apparently. We're not looking back and we just continue to move forward. And inshallah, by the fadl of Allah and by Allah's tawfiq, we are able to continue to put out the content. Please pray for us. Please make dua. Please become a patron of the show. Support us in any way you can financially. And beyond that, support us by sharing the podcast with others. If you enjoy what we do, if you enjoy particular episodes or enjoy the show at, you know, as a whole, please do share with your loved ones, your family, your network, your contacts. We're increasing engagement, not again for any financial compensation, but rather simply to allow the stories that we're capturing to reach a broader audience. That's what we want. That's what I want. And, uh, you know, I, that's why I care about engagement. I care about engagement because I want to do uh, a service to the people whose stories that we've captured on the show. I want more people to listen, more people to hear it. Uh, more people to get inspired by it, people to participate in the conversations that we have uh, or that we've had in the past. So we want to hear from you. We want to listen to we want to listen to your feedback. Uh, please, please, please email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com with any comments, any feedback that you can offer. Wherever you download and access your podcast, please go to that platform and leave a review, leave a star rating. Uh, every little bit helps. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for making these 10 years so very remarkable and so very special. Thank you for our longtime listeners. Thank you for our new listeners. If you're a new listener, please do go back and check out our archives. Check out the past shows, uh, some that I've alluded to on this very episode. So please continue to pray for us and support us and catch us on the next episode of Diffuse Converts. Thank <laughs> you.